So I'm recording this video while driving, so I'm not gonna probably look at the video much. I'm gonna just watch the road. Um, let's see if I can put it up enough to where you can actually see me. Not that you need to see me, but I am trying to chronicle the journey. Um, so anyway, I know I mentioned in one of the first two vlogs that we put with Homesteading with Holly, the Lord gave me the name of that series. Um, and he said that for me to chronicle the journey, the highs, the lows, the everything in between, he said, because there are other people that are going to be going out to establish houses of refuge and Bethels all over the country. And they need courage and they need um, strength. So I don't know really how much strength or encouragement I can give you right now, but I can tell you this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, and I've done some really crazy things. I opened a restaurant and I'm a nurse. And it was a few years after a wreck that I was in that completely changed my life. I crushed bones. I walked with crutches for half of, a little more than a half a year. I walked with a cane for three years that followed. They told me I would never walk without a cane the rest of my life and I can run now. That's where my holistic series has come from, is the Lord just teaching me in these last 20 years how to heal my body holistically. So anybody who says that holistic healing is not of the body and not doesn't belong to the bride, you don't know the king. He put all that food here and all those natural remedies from him. So anyway, I'm sure there's gonna be some bouncing a little bit. Um, I've got a long trek home and I feel like this story has to be captured. I've had I don't know, 20 people in the last year say the Lord says you have books in your belly and you're going to be writing books, not book, not a book. Um, and honestly, I'm a journaler, but I have not written in my journal in weeks and I never go weeks without journaling. So that should give you a little indication of how busy the season that we are in, we're in. So maybe nobody will watch this. Maybe somebody will watch this, but I'm going to pick up with where things happened about eight weeks ago and honestly months before that and even years before that the Lord has been speaking prophetically that my husband and I would birth a refuge a house of provision a house of refuge during a time of shaking um, and I believe there'll be shakings before bigger shakings and I believe we have a short-term shaking coming up and the Lord has been speaking to me about this for a long time I am not the only person I am not the only person that hears God so just so you know I'm just Holly just Holly, mama in the kitchen, a lover of God, a lover of my husband of 35 plus years. I follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he is my help. And even when I feel frail and I feel like I'm going to collapse, and I've had a few of those moments in the last little stretch, let me tell you, I am headed to my 60s, okay? I'm like almost double nickel soon, like in a month and a half. And I can't tell you the last time I was awake for 36 hours straight, <laughs> but that was no small thing. Anyway, I'm going around my elbow to get to my thumb. Let me get back to what I'm talking about. So anyway, it's been a hard little stretch here, but the Lord's been leading and guiding us and he's been telling us that this was going to happen and then the, the suddenlies came. And he had given me a word probably three or four years ago, my time with him just journaling, and he said, suddenlies await. And he said, get your house in order. And he said, purge your home as though you're about to move. So I did. I started doing it. I got my house, I thought, pretty purged. <laughs> but, oh my gosh. Then I purged it again when we put the house on the market. Then I purged it again before we got out and moved. And I'm still purging. So all I can tell you is downsize, downshift. Get rid of everything you do not need. Get your wardrobe down to tight. One week. I was doing 10 days, but let me tell you. You barely have time to change that many outfits and you don't care what you're wearing you just want it to be warm and tidy when you're in the middle of what we're doing so anyway um let's see suddenly some weight i would say that's when i really knew something was up and something was about to happen that was about four months ago i've had some people and we're part of the international house of prayer community here in kansas city we've been a part of that for over a decade um but i they have a prophecy room and i've been in and out of that several times just not even really i'm just like showing up and unbelievable what the lord was speaking so anyway um just to say well let me make sure i'm on the right turn yep yeah, right right okay just to say listen to the holy spirit and that's one of those things and all i can tell you is 
the end times church is going to be a listening church. She hears him. She loves him. She obeys him with violence. No matter what he tells you to do, if it makes no sense, but you know you've heard God, you do it. Because the safest place to be is in the center of God's will. So anyway, suddenly he's away. That's kind of where I knew we were about to step into something wild. And then, of course, Rachel and I went to Kona, Hawaii, for um, a passport to purity weekend that we turned into a week if you're going to pay to go to Hawaii. We were blessed with lots of suddenlies that made that possible. We certainly did not have a bunch of those dollars sitting around. We pretty much just paid for a rental car, and we everything else was the Lord providing. He prayed for the, provided the rental car, too, to be honest. So anyway, um, just adjusting the temperature. It's so humid right now. just trying to keep my windshield clear. Okay, so suddenlies away. Then we stepped into um, the dream that a dear friend of mine, reached out to me just before we left for Hawaii, probably about a week and a half before we left for Hawaii. And I, Keith and I had already been talking and feeling the stirring of the Lord, but really had no idea. We are thinking next spring, which would have been 2022, where we're going to put our house on the market and go to land. And we've been dreaming of land since we moved to Kansas City. We left land to come here. I left a restaurant called The Covenant to come here. It was a healthy cuisine and organic cuisine and gluten-free. It had, we had, we were just whole grain, gluten-free, which is pretty rare to find out public <laughs> so we left all that to come here and I didn't leave happily I left with tears it was like a double Isaac that got laid on the altar for me to come to Kansas City I'm so thankful we did um, but anyway we left 12 acres of land and a hundred tree established orchard that we planted and yeah so here we are almost 11 years later well not 11 10 and a half years later um, and a week and a half before we leave for Kona, a good friend of mine reaches out to me and says, Holly, I have this dream. And she's a dreamer, very prophetic, faithful woman, faithful family. We've known them for almost the whole time we've been here. Um, we met them in a home group that we were a part of and a ladies group that I've been a part of for almost almost eight years. Yeah, it'll be coming up in the first of the year, it'll be eight years. Um, her name is Trisha. And I know you've heard me speak of Adam. This is her, his faithful wife. Anyway, she's a dreamer, and she gets dreams for our family, too. So anyway, she gives me this dream, and she says, Holly, I feel like this is important. I don't really know what it means at all. And she tells me the dream. I immediately get off the phone and do an audio recording of what she told me to share with Keith later when he got home. And I look at him, and he looks at me, and he says, oh, man. And I said, you know what this means, too, don't you? And he says, yeah. He said, there's an invitation on the table. But this is the dream. It was really kind of a cool dream. But there was a table and there were all kinds of flavors of chocolate on the table all kinds of flavors and it was a choice and we got to choose whichever flavor we wanted now of course she's hearing this dream from the Lord and she doesn't know what it means but you know that you know that you know that the Lord's giving you an interpretation in the first moment you hear it you know what it means and you don't have to know the meaning of a dream for not to wait on the Lord wait on the Lord he'll give you the he'll give you what the meaning is or he'll give you someone in your path just pray and ask him because he speaks he never stops speaking um, we are the house of God so anyway this is the dream so on the table there's lots of flavors of chocolate and she said we get to choose what flavor and she said but there's a particular one that we could choose it's gonna be really hard um, and she said so hard that you know, like when the wind hits or something hits and your arms throw back and you can't even hold your arms up and you're just like so heavy laden with the weight of it. Very, very weighty. Um, and it wasn't a really lengthy dream. Um, I, I should have gone back and listened to the audio before I did this because I don't want to miss any of the details. But that was one of the most important part of the, the details to me was we knew that we could choose whatever flavor we wanted. We could have chose whichever angle. We could have gone and waited till next year, which was our plan. Um, and honestly, our plan was to get back on land the moment we moved here. <laughs> and then we sold our house that we've been in since we moved here. Great house. Sold it with a good increase. Um, and we could have gotten on land then, but the doors all were shutting. And so we sat in rental property and then our rental unit two years ago, two and a half years ago, went up dramatically. And we're like, oh man, we can't even afford that. So we're like, it's just not the hour to move to land. And we knew it wasn't. It, we could just feel it. And so we were trying to find another rental property and they were so expensive. I mean, we were only going to go from expensive to expensive. Um, 
um, and my husband's like, I think we should just get a fixer upper and, um, you know, just sit in that for a bit until the Lord releases us to go to land. And I'm like, wow, what a great idea. So we reached out to our prophetic realtor. Her name is Allison Story. If you live in this area, that's the woman you want. Um, you let me know. I'll give you her contact info. Just message me below the video and I will give you. She is prophetic and she'll tell you like it is. <laughs> I mean, there was one point two years ago, over two years ago, we were looking for a house and I was like, oh, I'd like to live near a friend. And she's like, Holly, you know, pick a house to live near a friend. Just telling you. She's like, you pick a house to make it solid or a house that you can sell later because you know you're not going to be in here forever. She said, this is not the house that you would put so much work into this just to get it livable. And she said that you need a house that you can get in and be ready to go. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> so we let that one go and we just kept looking. And then we were like, we gotta make a decision. And so we both picked a house and anyway, the house that we just sold is that house. Like we both picked one and we went and looked at it and there we go, we got that house. So that's a longer story, we won't go into that. So the dream chocolate pick a flavor it's gonna be hard like 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 the wind blowing so hard like during a tornado like we just about had a tornado touchdown near us just recently I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute but anyway that's what it was putting your arms out it was so hard you could hardly stand and then um, she said as she woke she heard the, the number a hundred thousand and a cow she saw a cow <laughs> and if you if you're a dreamer and I don't actually get dreams like I don't know. I get some crazy dreams. I've got dreams all over the place. And I've been a dreamer since I was a child. Um, I saw the, the return of Christ in a dream. And I had never even owned a Bible at that point. And then when I read the Bible and I get a copy of my first Bible, I got saved young, but I never owned a Bible until I was in my um, late teens. Um, like just before I graduated is when I got my first Bible. Seriously. So, it, but it was many years later before I read the book of Revelation and and anything to do with end times, even though I've been getting end time dreams since I was a child. Um, let me see, rabbit trail, I feel like I'm rabbit trailing again, sorry y'all. Anyway, backtrack, finish the dream, Holly. Don't go too many rabbit trails. I'll probably rabbit trail again, just trying to backtrack. So anyway, cow, 100,000, and she gives me the dream. And I feel like there was a few more details, but that was the, that was the heart of it. Um, and she felt the weightiness of the dream. She had no understanding of the dream. She just felt it. She just felt like, I have to get this to Holly. And she's like, I know you're about to go out of town and I don't want to give you anything that give you burden. And I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Tell me the dream. So I share it with my husband that night. We pray. I immediately hear, this is the Lord. Keith felt the same thing. I said, Keith, I feel like that we've got an invitation here. We can choose and we get to choose and we'll be blessed no matter what we choose. But I believe there's a choice that's going to be really hard, but it's going to be blessed. He said, Holly, I feel the same thing. Literally, a few days later, we signed paperwork with our prophetic, friendly neighborhood prophetic realtor, Allison. And we put our house on the market literally two weeks after we come back from Kona. So we go to Kona, Rachel and I, for seven days. Come back, get over jet lag for a few seconds, and we get the house ready. And it goes live 11 days later. It sells like two days later. Um, the following weekend, we go look at this property, which my realtor had found. And we had several other, but this is the one that stood out. Um, so anyway, fast forward, here we are, we're on the land. We closed on the property a little over a week ago. Today's eight days. Can I tell you about the last eight days? Wow. And honestly, getting to the closing was nothing but a small miracle, maybe more than a small miracle. Our neighbors across the street, our good buddy Adam McKee, who is building our house. If you need anybody who wants, who can do anything, this, this fella can do it all. He is third generation, I think it's third generation. If I did that wrong, Adam, forgive me. A plumber, but he knows how to do everything. He can build a house pretty much from scratch. Um, the very bottom part of it, foundation stuff, we've got somebody hired out to do that. He recommended and we are taking that. So anyway, um, here we are. We are on the land and we've had no rain since I think the first week of July, like maybe a splatter or two. So all the rain that should have hit Kansas City in the last several months all hit 
um, in the last few days. So we actually had to get to a hotel last night because it was pretty last minute. We are living in a tent village basically while our amazing friend Adam is building the camper of love. <laughs> brotherly love, like hope arises, homesteads, brotherly love, camper of brotherly love. He found it, got it, he's flipping it. I mean, we're, we're covered the parts and everything, but dear God, the, the amount of goodness and kindness he's pouring into it, just helping us. So the camper is going to be super stable once it's up and running, and I know this is going to be way long, so I suspect hardly anybody's going to get this far. But I bless everybody that's standing with us, praying with us, loving us, and getting us even to this far. But I can't, I got to capture the journey. I got to capture, that's what the Lord told me to do. He said, be transparent. Talk about the hard stuff. Talk about the easy stuff. He said, you're going to give courage and strength. Hold on, I'm looking for my highway. Nope, not there yet. Um, to people that I'm going to call out to do the very same thing. And you don't know what you're doing. And they don't know what they're doing. But they're courageously, they're saying yes to God. And they're doing the hard stuff. So that's what we've done. We courageously said yes. I mean, it's been eight weeks since we put the house on the, like we put the house, took a week and a half to get the house on the market. It sold. We made an offer on land. We got the land, the number, 100,000. Yeah. This land is worth more than that. But that's all we can afford because we have to, you know, finance it. Like we ain't got money sitting in the bank. Who does, right? And we're literally building a simple, simple house. We will be doing the finishing. We're gonna have a concrete floor. We're gonna be doing all the painting. We'll probably, after the drywall's up, we'll do all the, the ceiling of it. I know how to do all that. My husband knows how to do things and he's learning a lot. We're all learning a lot, let me just tell you. So anyway, we're on the land and like literally the first night, the generator, which we've had for 10 years, works great it decided it was going to catch fire. Now, not the whole thing. It just needed some stuff done. My husband pulled up a YouTube video. Y'all be amazed what's on a YouTube video. Like if your generator's doing this, he just looked it up. There it was. We went and got the stuff we needed from Menards, put it all in the next night. We didn't stay there the first night because it was way too cold. Fall kind of got skipped is all I'm telling you. I've been praying for fall to stay until spring. <laughs> but anyway, we get out there the next night. We got heat. We're in the pop-up. We've got a tent to hold all of our kitchen stuff and all of our things that would not fit in a pop-up. Um, the camper got brought up out a few days later and everything's kind of humming along and we're doing okay. It kind of felt like there was just about a 48 hour honeymoon period. And then we have green skies and anybody who's lived in the Kansas City area or anywhere there's tornadoes, when you see a sky turn green, it's time to go to the basement, to be honest with you. And the winds came and they came and they came and they shook and somehow we kept it all up. <laughs> and we really, I was ready to go to a hotel. I was like, I paid by it, we don't pay for a hotel. But I thought we're not gonna jeopardize our lives to sit out there. I mean, we got chickens, we got a dog and cats. We get everybody as secure as we can and we're hitting the road. And he, he said, babe, we're gonna be fine. I really feel like we're gonna be fine. I prayed about it and um, I'm like, well, I'm gonna go pray. And I just went and found a little spot and just hung out with the Lord for a few minutes and just went, Lord, you know, we're not toughing this out. We're not going to jeopardize our well-being. And I heard the Holy Spirit say the same thing that he, my husband said, you're going to be fine. Stay. So we stayed. And I mean, the pop-up just, it never moved. But, you know, it's fabric. <laughs> I love pop-ups, by the way. I'd prefer to have a pop-up than an RV any day of the week. Not to mention, it's an old one. It was flipped. It sat in a garage. It was pretty much brand new when we got it. And we got it for a song. And we've loved it. We've traveled all over the place with it. We've gone to the ocean with it. Um, but we've never been in the middle of land with no water, no electricity. We do have a pond. Um, ever. <laughs> and we were really like, just open. You know, we're in October. Usually it's really mild until about the beginning of December at the, you know, like it's usually a little bit milder than this. But oh, no, no. So we have tornado warnings going off and green skies and wind like crazy. I don't think anybody paid attention to what the per mile was, but it was it was some of the hardest wind I've seen since I moved here. And we've been here 10 and a half years. So anyway, we get through that and we're just setting things up, getting things established, trying to get things organized because I mean, our move out was kind of a scoop. It was very organized. We opened the storage unit three weeks ahead of time and moved everything we owned into it. But obviously, you know, you're gonna take some of the stuff to the land 
and that was where we had some glitches. We were gonna put that in our storage unit until the day after we moved out and then just bring out what we needed a little at a time. Our storage unit, I'm just telling you, warfare like crazy. Our amazing storage unit, Blue Sky Storage in you know the town that we're in, uh, great national company, fantastic security, really good price, clean as a whistle. You know, we've had some real bad experiences with storage. I mean, I have had things that were special that I had to throw away because water got in there or rats got in there from somebody else's unit. Unbelievable stuff. So this place is awesome. But the few days before our closing, their entire digital system for getting in and out of the gate fried and shut down. So we would take a big old trailer full of stuff in and we could get it in. Now before that, Rachel and I have been taking it a load every couple times, two or three times a week, and we pretty much had two-thirds of everything already in the storage unit. But the last bit, the last fourth, to be honest with you, was what's coming to the land eventually. So we were just going to put it in the front of the storage unit and pull it out a little at a time. Oh, no, 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 no. We couldn't get anything into the storage unit for like three and a half days before we closed. So we have it all in one room knowing that was the land stuff that's going with us eventually. So it would get lost and it's all packed and labeled. Oh no, we could, and I was packing as I went. So as soon as stuff would get out, I keep packing more and just doing that. So all that stuff sitting in the room and we still have the rest of what needs to be done. All the furniture's gone, we've done sold most of it. We got rid of almost everything. Like, cause we're not gonna pay six months for stuff. I mean, antique stuff that belonged to my pup pup, that stuff was in storage week one. So anyway, here we are. <laughs> We can't get anything in there. And I mean, they were amazing. At first, they're like, no, no, you should have been able to get in. And then everybody else started complaining. And we're like, oh, no. So they were nice. They blessed us with a credit. And they helped us with getting a second unit and giving us a good discount. So we were really blessed. They accommodated and worked with us to just get. But basically, all of our belongings. And we had, yeah, I know I've talked about the Daves across the street. Oh, my gosh. What would we have done without those precious old fellas? coming alongside us so they loaded up everything for, we got everything Adam and Keith got everything across the street into their front yard into their front yard y'all not even kidding because we couldn't get it into storage <laughs> and this is the good stuff the stuff we need at the land right they got we got they got it over there and the Daves covered it with mega tarps and protected it and then two days later they loaded it themselves for us I feel so loved. We've had so much kindness poured out on us. Just extravagance over and over and over. Just people I would have never expected. Seriously. Anyway, so they loaded it. Yeah, y'all get to watch me get out to the land. I'll have to finish it with you letting a look at the mud pies out here. <laughs> I got to that part yet, have I? Uh, so anyway, and it's okay. If nobody watches this, I don't care. At least it's chronicling the journey for me and for posterity, right? So anyway, um, they get it all on the rig and they take it into our storage unit. We just fling it into a new storage unit that eventually will be the only storage unit. The one that's perfectly packed all the way to the front. I swear it's perfect. It's like, it's like Mary Poppins, perfectly perfect storage unit. Rachel and I packed every bit of it. Not one person went in there besides she and I, and we are like organizational, like nuts. Like our whole house is, my whole house is not like that. But when I have time to plan it and do it, it's like ducks were all in a row. It was perfect. The other storage unit looks like a zoo. <laughs> so my uh, my amazing sister-in-law, Erin, that's sister, not really sister-in-law, she's going to help me get that organized. So we'll get down to one unit before long. But just giving you some thoughts. This is what happened to us. It doesn't mean it's going to happen to you, but man, anybody who knows about warfare, this was some kind of warfare. And I'll be honest with you, everything has to pass through the Lord's hand. So I remember after the tornado warnings, and the Lord said, you'll be fine, stay. The next morning, the winds are still blowing, but it finally had died down. And I asked the Lord, I'm like, why did you have a stay? Why did you let the winds keep coming? And he said, well, I didn't let the tornadoes touch down near you. And and I don't know if there was tornado touchdowns anywhere. I didn't really ask anybody. I just like, we're like in our own little tunnel vision right here. Um, and yeah, this is a really tight, 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 tight corner. Um, let's see, anyway. Um, I was like, why did you not let up the winds? I prayed and declared those winds would not come near our land. And he said, I allowed the winds so that I could train you. 
And I thought, oh, college has already started, right? And I was like, okay, well, we didn't lose anything and we learned how to secure tight tarps with T-post <laughs> and some kick butt twine. So um, we did have some, what is an old tent we have that have all our stuff in. So we had to pull everything that was valuable or anything that was perishable up on tables until we knew for sure we weren't gonna lose anything through wind or lose anything through rain. Um, but yeah, we've learned a lot, a lot, a lot. Tarps are gold, T-posts are gold. A T-post tapper and a T-post puller. These are things you want because you can on a dime and some good, strong, waterproof twine um, because on a dime you can secure things. You can make um, a lean-to, you can make, uh, you can winterize something, you can waterproof something. <laughs> Maybe not winterize it, but you can waterproof it at least. Um, so anyway, and minimalism, man, study that. Dear God, keep it tight. I mean, when the Lord told me that, I didn't share that on here, but I shared it on my Instagram account. But the story of the hollyhock, um, the lesson of the hollyhock. But I had this beautiful hollyhock. It was probably about four feet high. It had bloomed all summer long and it was just starting over again. It was blooming and I'd already collected some seeds so that I would have it. So that'll be out in our seed saving video. So I had saved seed from it. I thought, oh, I'm gonna grow this next year. It's the prettiest hollyhock. And of course it's like a flower with my name in it. That's one of my favorite flowers. Um, so anyway, I was, um, man, you get to ride with me all the way to our land. That means this video is a little long. <laughs> um, so the hollyhock, I'll have to put a picture up here. I'll get Rachel when she edits this for right about here to put the picture up. And, but anyway, what the Lord said is take it with you. I was like, oh, I was sitting on my front porch and looking at my front kitchen garden. And I'm like, oh, I want to take the hollyhock with me, but I know it won't make it. He said, take it with you. And I'm like, oh Lord, it's only got a few. And like, as soon as the hard freeze comes, it'll be dead. And I was like, oh, you're right. You told me years ago to contend for order and to contend for beauty. And this is contending for beauty. So I'm going to take it with me. So I transplanted it into what I thought would hold it because it had pretty deep roots at this point and put some holes in the bottom and mulched it up really well with some hay. And the next morning, and I watered it well, and the next morning it was like, it was like, like half the thing and just bowed over. And I was like, oh no, poor hollyhock, it's gonna die. And I just heard the Holy Spirit say, trim away everything that's not essential and it will live and it will thrive. And I went, oh, well, I'll have to take the blossoms. It won't be able to bloom or fruit right now. So I trimmed away at least a third of it and a lot of the lower leaves perked right on up. And you know, I'm a pruner. I've kept an orchard for many years and I'm a gardener. So I do understand the concept, but I, I was like, okay, I'm going to cut away the blossoms because they're all like up at the top. And the next day it livened up even more, but there was still, you could tell the load was too heavy. There was too much for it to sustain itself. So I trimmed away even more. So I had cut it back to about a fourth, maybe a third of what it had been originally. And the next day it was beautiful. It was all perked up. And the cool thing is I took all the foliage and I tucked it down and made mulch out of it. The other day, the, the the blossom from the hollyhock that I tucked down in there just to let it mulch and just kind of, you know, keep it, make it waterproof. Can you believe that that thing bloomed just the other day? Now, this was weeks ago that I cut this all down, but I brought it with me because I was like, oh God, you're teaching me something to cut things back and remove everything that's not essential and just keep it tight, keep everything tight and not too heavy because you know you can fruit but you shouldn't be fruiting right now when you're in the middle of this like I'm in the middle of transition out the wazoo there ain't no business me doing any fruit right now it's got to be tight 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 this is not my time to serve others even though I love serving the body of Christ it is very hard for me not to serve and I still will probably serve you know what I mean I, I mean people having babies or somebody sick or somebody reaches out and says, Holly, I've got this going on or that going on. What should I do? I mean, I'm not going to just shut down everything, but it's not the season to be full on fruiting. So anyway, um, the lesson of the hollyhock. So the hollyhock probably won't last much longer. I mean, as soon as we have a cold, really hard cold, we haven't had anything really hard cold, but we've had low forties, high thirties at night. It'll make it till after it goes below freezing for a prolonged period of time. It'll make it up until then. 
but and then the, I just felt like it was a kiss from the Lord with that little blossom opening up weeks later that was just shoved down in there to be mulch and it popped right open so yeah in this drive beautiful oh my goodness it's pretty so anyway let's say okay so fast forward a little bit we got through the storm um, I kind of backward a little bit with the hollyhock story because I wanted to capture that um, and I will definitely put the picture of that up here. It's so pretty. And I need to take a picture of it, the little blossom that's blooming that's just tucked down in there as mulch. Um, I'll see if I remember to do that today. So then we had a little bit of a stay after the windstorm. And we had a oh, half a day that was just lovely. It was so nice. And then the rains came. And we knew they were coming. But boy, 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 boy. And we're running on a generator and gallon jugs from Aldi's. Let me tell you, we've been wearing out some water from the Aldi's. Um, but, and a Berkey, but the Berkey got knocked over. So we have to redo the filters, but whatever. They got busted. That happens once in a blue moon. You try to really reassure, you know, sure it up not to do that. But there's only so much space where something's not going to get wind hit or whatever. Um, so anyway, the rains came. And they came and came and we've got a refrigerator out here because you know it's it's an old refrigerator it's okay if it only makes it six months uh, we haven't even put a tarp on it yet because we were planning to do that but literally like we put a chicken run up we got the chicken coop out here we got everything set for the animals the cats and the dog and i mean we've just been like we've only been on the land just a few days and here comes the rain we had the tornadoes then comes the rain and i mean raining sideways like deluge rain and we've got prairie grass, so it handles a lot before it gets boggy. But oh my word, it got so much. And we've only been running the heater at night. Because, um, you know, we're, we're doing stuff during the day or we're in the tent during the day to fix breakfast and lunch or whatever. Or we're on the road to head into town to get supplies. So we're just trying to be frugal because the more you pull on your generator, the more you're draining the gas. And so we're going through like, you know, we all know the gift of the Biden administration, right? The gas prices are through the roof. So, you know, we're trying to keep it minimal, but by doing that, we've allowed the inside of the fabric to the pop-up, which is like excellent pop-up, I'm telling you. We've done, gone through rain, but we should have kept the heater running continuously. So last, not last night, but the night before, you know, it's raining, like unbelievable kind of rain, like just unbelievable. And like almost to the end of the night, I could feel moisture on the ceiling. So I'm like, and it's got a little, gentle slant so most of the moisture was hitting my side like like we just it's it's as level as we can get it but mine's like the lowest point so thankfully it all was accumulating over above me and not near my kids so anyway needless to say the heater is staying on continuously I'm about to go out here now and let all the animals out um, let the chickens out let <laughs> let the dog out thank god we have a um, yeah we've got everything set up for them so so we're just going to be coming out twice a day for right now until we get the rain to let up because we can't even drive on the land. So we have to walk in a little over a quarter mile, close to a half mile in. We have to walk because <laughs> we can't even get vehicles in there. So we ended up at the hotel last night and we are going to stay another night tonight. But these will be our last nights in a hotel um, and we will be um, we'll be staying with family um, and friends as needed. We've had some precious people just reach out and go hey we got a room we got a bed come um that's what love has looked like to me i have a lasagna in my car right here that's about to go to my son's house that my dear friend betty brought me homemade big old pan of lasagna and she's taking our refrigerator because we're, we're just we got to shut it down until the camper's done so the camper of brotherly love <laughs> the hope arises homestead camper that will eventually be when we have company out with like my son or anybody that, that's family or whatever that comes out to stay to visit us because you come out here you're coming out for a bit um so it, we'll use it long term but for right now it's getting flipped so it'll be a safe winter spot for us it's huge it's huge <laughs> i'm so thankful for that but it's not done it has to have a new roof um and adam's handling that and he's working on the inside as fast as he can do. I mean, it's only been on the property just a few days. So once that's ready, we'll be out here full time again. But uh, yeah, pop up. And it's so funny. Um, our friend Jeff um, that's our, uh, did our floor plans and he's the builder that's overseeing everything. Um, he, he and Adam both said, you're not staying out there all winter in a pop up, are you? And I'm like, yeah, we can do this. We can winterize it. I've read and things like that. Oh, man. I feel like the Lord just let all this stuff come to show us 
we need to say yes to any and all help that is offered. So be humble. And I don't feel like I won. I just was like, yeah, we can do this. I felt like it was courage and strength. So anyway, uh, we are not going to be living out here in a pop-up long term. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm not even sure if I want to go back in there at all. Um, but yeah, I don't want water dripping on me. I don't want pneumonia. I mean, we know how to keep our immune system strong. Oh, that's so cool. Don't tread on me. I don't know if I can turn this around to show it to you. Yeah, we're out here in conservative territory, let me tell you. Everybody here has a Bible and most likely any other items they might need. But they love Jesus. They love life. And no doubt they all voted that way, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, we're all waiting for that to be corrected and restored from what was stolen last November. Alrighty, so here we go. Finish this story, Holly, before this is um, 15 chapters long. So we bailed yesterday. Not really. We were pretty courageous, but I'm not having water on the inside. You know what I mean? I can deal with a tent that's got all of our belongings in and there's a little water in there. But where we're sleeping at night, it needs to be safe. And that was not where we were yesterday. So we will probably tarp that up and use it for storage once we're in the camper. Because once we tarp it, it can handle continual moisture. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to have direct moisture on it because we're going to put a really big tarp and T-post. Telling you, tarp, heavy duty, T-post, heavy duty twine. A T-post tapper, a T-post puller. Crucial. <laughs> um, really crucial. Oh, another thing that we've learned along the way. Um, we've never tried to do this many things in a pop-up at one time. So we, actually we have, and we have blown out some things. But what we have learned is on your generator and yes you have to have a, if you're going in the middle of land while you build and you may not do that maybe you go in the middle of land you're gonna stay i don't know if you're in the south you don't need the extremes that we're having to go to but we're in the middle of the country and when we have winter let me tell you last winter it was negative eight and indy and dave who i know you have already met through some of my previous videos um he told me so holly it's gonna be a serious winter and he said i feel it coming and his dad man his dad he told me a story they were doing a job because they build houses and stuff like that. And um, they could do all kinds of stuff. He was just amazing. Still amazing. It's just his body doesn't catch up to where his heart and his mind is. But um, anyway, they were out working and building something. And his dad started putting all his tools up. And, uh, you know, valuable tools. And Dave's like, man, we got a few more hours of work. What you doing? He says, storm coming. He says, sky is blue. He said, there ain't no storm coming. And his dad said, do whatever you want put my stuff up I'm done for the day he went in and he said a storm like he had never seen in his life came and he was flinging his stuff into a building to get it protected so his tools wouldn't get ruined by the rain <laughs> I was like I said like, wonder how he could tell and he said I don't know he never really told me he said but there wasn't nothing in the sky and he said he just would know it. And he said his dad knew everything. He said there wasn't a plant in this region that he didn't know what it was, what it was for, how to harvest it, how to harness it. And I said, man, I would have liked to have hung out with him for a few weeks, maybe even longer. But he said, I wish I'd have paid more attention. I said, I wish you would have too, because then you could teach me. All right, so let's see, where are we at? Rain, 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 and more rain. It was like the Noah's Ark thing. I felt like my pop-up was about to float away. So we moved out yesterday and pulled out enough stuff for a couple of days. Went to Walmart, bought stuff to make sandwiches, try to keep it simple because you can only buy carry out so much. We've been eating lots of apples and lots of color and salads, just keeping it simple. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyway, we are, we're out for a few days. Um, so the main thing for us right now, no oh, power cords. Let me tell you about the power cords. And it's so fun. We have a friend. Um, his name's Steve. I won't tell you his last name because I don't have his permission to share his last name. But he and his family have felt the same nudge that we felt, but they went out before we did. And um, they, they, I've known they had land and they're planning to build on it for a long time, but they just, they, they jumped on it recently, a few months back, and they put their house in the market. They're already in the process of building, and they went ahead and just put their house in the market, sold it, got a camper, put it on the land, and moved out. And they have a big family, so that's no small thing. And I mean, it was kind of like, probably I hope it's a nicer camper than what we have but our camper is perfect in all of its ways that's how I feel I mean Adam's already pulled so much out we got to walk through it 
and I was just like, wow, this looks amazing. Uh, but he's got to re-roof it first. So we got to get some dry weather. So anybody that's gotten this far and wants to pray for dry, 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 and winds to blow away all the moisture, that we'd appreciate it. So um, anyway, so we, I don't know how soon we'll be back in the pop-up. So we're going to be making treks back and forth um, just to handle things. And we'll be staying in town for most of this next week, I think. Just to dry out. Um, thankfully, we, we homeschool. So we started school early, really not even knowing. We just always try to start beginning of August just so we can be done early. But we won't be done early next year because we have taken off the last few weeks. We were doing half days um, and just doing our half day stuff. Um, but wow. And we'll be doing quite a few double days just to catch up. So, but not right now. When it gets really cold, we're going to be able to do a ton of double days because there ain't nothing else you're going to be doing. It's going to be cold. So anyway, where am I at? I've done lost where I was at. There's just so many steps along the way. But rain, 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 like, like Noah. <laughs> Night, day, continuous rain, penetrating rain. Oh my goodness, rain. So everything's nice and clean as a whistle. It's all fresh as a daisy. But we're out and power cords. I knew there was something I was going to do. Power cords. You can only put one thing to a, like a heavy load, like a hot plate or a heater is a heavy load. So one item like that plus a lamp, something low load like a lamp um, or charging your phone. But never put a hot plate and a heater on the same or you're going to melt your power cords. So we had some old power cords. So at first we thought that's what was going on. And then we realized, nope, that's not what's going on. So if we need to turn the kettle on and we've already got the hot plate on, <laughs> we have plugged something. But one heavy item to a heavy duty cord that runs directly to the generator. So we've got four orange cords now running from the generator. One goes into the pop-up that does our heater in there and a lamp. And then the rest go into the tent because we have a hot plate there and we have a heater in there and we have a kettle in there. So anyway, oh, and the refrigerator, refrigerator gets one. So two to the tent, one to the refrigerator. And honestly, this refrigerator is just an old beat up one. We're gonna um, do something around it and tuck it close to the camper because we're gonna keep it all winter because I shop every two weeks. I've, I've done that for the longest time and it just makes for very efficient food management. So, um, so you know, that's how we're gonna be rolling. And so we will keep that, even though there's a little fridge and freezer inside, which is nice. So we don't have to go out there. That'll just be our backup. So we'll keep that as long as we tarp it and keep it. It's not even tarped right now and it's still running, which is praise God. So anyway, what we are learning along the way, just sharing with y'all, but my goodness, I have cried out to the Lord. I have cried out to my friends and said, please cover us. We don't even know what to do. And we've had people offering, I mean, literally just the last few days I've had people go, We've got a room, we've got a bed, we've got air mattresses, we've got a meal. I got a friend, she is amazing, just a new friend. We've only known her for like six months or less. And I mean, she is like a forever friend. Uh, she's made a key so that when we're in town, we can use the bathroom, take a shower. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like, wow, we are so blessed and loved. Um, so anyway, say yes. When somebody offers something to you, say yes. Do not turn away any help. And do not be afraid to ask for help because you're going to need help to do this. And honestly, I really believe even this morning as I was talking to the Lord. Oh, one of the other things, our body, every morning I wake up and I go, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that I had these muscles. I've, my clothes are all falling off. They're so loose from all the hard work we've done in the last few weeks. And I heard the Lord was, I was like rubbing something and putting an icy hot patch or something on it. And he said, this hard work is preserving your bodies to my Keith, Keith and I. And I was like, you're so good, Lord. Um, anyway, I was like, but this is what we're learning along the way. But this morning we had, um, and we've been crying out and asking the Lord for help. Yeah, I'm not going to be going in there. Too wet. Oh, I wish you could see it. I might have to take the camera in and just take a little bit of a video as I walk in. But I've been asking the Lord, you know, just for help because we have things we need. We don't know what we're doing. I mean, we you know, we're, we're helping with finding all the contractors for everything because, you know, this is kind of a unique situation. The, the person that's covering this project as a builder, you know, he actually works in a different capacity now. So he's not even doing, not even working in that capacity, but he's doing it as a friend. And I mean, as a brother in Christ, I am just so thankful for his family. So, so thankful for them standing with us. Well, that's the land behind us and that's the entrance, nice and wet. Walk on in there, take care of the chickens and the dog and the cats. Gather a few things for us to stay in town. There we go. 
But here I go walking in. It's super beautiful, isn't it? So this isn't our land and this isn't our land, but this is, we have an access road here right now until our road is cut. But isn't that just beautiful? So ours is where you can see the white set up there and then right to the right is the pond. That's our land. So I'm headed on in. Mm -hmm. 